My name is Jesus M. Alvarado. Like you heard before, so del Segundo Barrio. That's where I was, uh, spent most of my life, you know. Um, I grew up in Segundo Barrio, and I want to tell you a little bit some of the stories that would go back to some of these murals. Uh, growing up, I went to several centers, after school programs. One of them um, was on uh, Father Ram, before it used to be Fifth and Mesa. We used to call it Mesetro Chicano. Uh, the time it also became La Campaña, and that's kind of what, what we kind of kept calling it. Uh, this center in particular was uh, run by David Romo, who's a historian here from town. Uh, David uh, kept running that center for a while. Uh, then he moved over to uh, another property, which is on Santa Fe and 4th Street. And uh, we kept going to, to, to that center. Uh, cha he changed the name of it, called it Southside Learning Center. We kept calling it La Campaña. And uh, uh, just the other day I was talking to David and he's like, yeah, I remember you guys used to call me El Pizzerolas. And I was like, yeah, I remember that. He's like, why did you guys used to call me that? And I'm like, I don't remember David. <laughs> and uh, it's like, probably because I brought a lot of pizzas. And I'm like, yeah, because you brought a lot of pizzas. But he used to wear this beret. Right? So we always come like pizzerolas, you know, el pizzerolas. I even el pizzerolas. And uh, we always had, had fun. And he still probably thinks that we used to call him pizzerolas because he always bought, bought us pizzas. Uh, but he did a lot of great things. And to me, uh, at that time, uh, he got monies from, uh, from uh, nonprofits. At, the, at this point, it was PIC, Private Industry Council. Well, he got some monies to hire youth to work in that center and do like a, a youth, hiring youth, kind of working with youth. And um, this is the first mural that they produced there. This is the first mural that I saw. And that's kind of what got me started. This is in 1987, right? Uh, the mural was produced by Carlos Callejo. Uh, Carlos Callejo uh, worked with, uh, I don't know how many kids. I was not able to participate in this because I'm not going to tell you my age, but I was really young in 1987. Uh, but if you look at this, you know, it resembles a lot of the work that I do now. You know, a lot of my work is political. A lot of my work has stories within it. And that's what I see muralism as. Um, a lot of muralism now, I see it uh, like there's a lot of decorative muralism, which is great. You know, but I, I think, you know, for the stuff that I want to create and keep doing, it has to tell the stories. It has to tell, especially stories of our communities. And I keep talking about how, unfortunately, you know, our educational system is not telling the stories that we need to hear. Um, we keep telling our kids, our youth, be proud of where you're from. Do they know where they're from? I don't think they do. And I don't think they're being taught any of the stories that they should be proud of. Um, this mural, uh, talks about something that is really even relating to today. Uh, it's called technology against humanity. And what Carlos was talking about is, you know, what we can use technology for. We can use technology for good rather than for evil, for weapons of destruction, for wars, and for things like that. And, you know, this is kind of the first, um, and okay, I'll tell you, I was 11 years old at that time <laughs> in 87, 88. So I, I'm not being able to participate in this. But I'm seeing these images. I'm seeing these uh, messages coming through. And I mean, you know, I, if you guys can see that, you can read some of the messages that were put on those walls. Um, if you guys understand Spanish, if not, I'm sorry. Mientras que la tecnología más avanzada sea de los hombres que viven del sudor y la sangre de otros hombres, no se podrá decir que la luna y el mar han sido conquistados por la humanidad. I'm 11 years old. My brain is going crazy. In memory of 17 million children who will die this, this year from wars and hunger, I think it is. So they have this big party, you know, and they have this great unveiling with folklorico and, and everything like that. And again, this is my first experience in muralism. There, so you don't imagine. That's just me at 11 years old. <laughs> uh, so he kept going with this program. Uh, they, they used to have a, 
a screen printing, muralism, and what I really got attached to was chess, a chess program. And this is one of the ladies that used to go in there and teach us chess. I eventually ended up uh, becoming a chess coach and uh, uh, teaching in some of the elementary schools. And we took kids from Segundo Barrio to uh, a state tournament, you know, in Houston or somewhere. So that was the whole point of that other project that, that, that uh, David had, you know, to create, you know, spark something in the barrio. And I think, you know, uh, this is why I love this, this, this photo so much. This, by, by the way, the photo, this one and the one before are David Promos uh, photos. I want to take credit for that. Again, I was 11 years old. <laughs> so this is me. But if you look right here, that's also me. And I love this photo because if I only knew what I know right now back then, I wouldn't have done so many mistakes, I think. Or if I would have listened to all those elders, to all the abuelitas, to all the tias telling me not to do the things that I was doing, you know, in the barrio or other things. So it's a great reminder for me, you know, of, and it's a great photo. I mean, I barely discovered this late last year when you sent it to me. But um, that, you know, that whole movement that, that he did with that mural sparked a whole bunch of other things. This is another mural that came out in the barrio, you know, so we're talking about the 80s, the late 80s, and then they started creating a whole bunch of other murals. And again, these murals kept telling those stories. You know, this is, uh, again, Carlos Callejo that, you know, kept doing those, those murals down there. Uh, El Chuco Ike tells the story of the stereotype of El Paso. I'm sure uh, you guys go out of town, you say they're from El Paso, Texas, they're like, where's your hat? <laughs> where's your boots? <laughs> you guys have a horse? <laughs> And this is kind of like what he was talking about, you know. Uh, that's why we had the cowboy with a big truck. I mean, I have a truck, but it's not that big. And, um, but then he wanted to go in further and explore it more. And again, and this is the kind of muralism that I started, you know, getting influenced by. You know, the fence represents the border. The fence represents the river. You know, growing up in the barrio, growing up Mexican-American, you know, you're going to have to balance yourself, either a Mexican or am I American, you know? Uh, so that's what that represents. That's why you have the, you know, uh, Border Patrol. And uh, it's also a chronological uh, story of our people from the barrio, from the Cholo, Tirilon, to the Pachuco. So if you see, they're all dressed different, and it's kind of like uh, the way that, that the dress uh, evolved in our, in our community. And of course, we see a whole bunch of oil around here, right? So and it's kind of just talking about the stereotype. But um, this is what started influencing me. And uh, then I wanted to, uh, years later, right, I wanted to start creating my own work. And I, I go back into um, what is it that we need in our community? We need our people to be proud of who, who they are. This is Javier Montes. Javier Montes is the first person to go to the Olympics from UTEP. He's the first person to get a gold medal in El Paso, Texas. Javier Montes was a Chicano from Segundo Barrio and graduated from Bowie High School. I keep asking people and people have never heard of Javier Montes. Why? Our stories are not being told, are not being taught. <clears throat> this is Javier Montes, uh, when he was a boy. So we got together, and um, Bowie High School was originally where Guillen Middle School is now. And um, that's where I imagined that Javier Montes would practice track and practice what, you know, what he was, the sports that, that he was doing. So we decided to do a big painting of Javier Montes and put it on the track. And this is like the project that I love, because it's a project that was coordinated um, by a community. Right, this is not a commission. This is something that I did because I got the help from the community. Uh, you have one of my friends here who's, who is a custodian from Guillen Middle School. And he, I told him, hey, we, we need to do this. And he had this idea. And he said, you know what, here's some money to buy the, the plywood, um, the materials. And you know, the community just started getting together and we just did it. We installed it at, at Guillen Middle School. And our hopes is that kids are gonna start asking, who is this man? Who is that guy? And then we're gonna be telling them, this is, this is who it is. 
And, um, you know, I especially wanted to do that because growing up in the barrio is like, who do we look up to? Do we, do we have any uh, superstars that came out of this barrio? Do we have any athletes that made it somewhere? Javier Montes did, but we didn't know about it. So we need to start telling these stories, and we need to keep doing that. <clears throat> this is a, a, one of my last projects that I did, and I, you know, I've been really uh, grateful and really, you know, uh, mostly grateful that I, I get commissions like this, and I get the liberty to do what I, what I want to do. Uh, this is at, now uh, at the Chamisal Community Center, and this is a little bit of the story of Chamisal. I know uh, a lot of you guys have seen these, these poles that are, when you drive down Paisano, you see them like that. Th those used to represent the border. Uh, but when they would flood down there, you know, kind of the land would get a little, <laughs> little uh, maybe U.S. would lose some, maybe Mexico would lose more, because, you know, so it would get a little. Uh, so that's why this is called Blurred Boundaries. And uh, I, I read in one of the articles, uh, we're doing some research of a man that said, oh my God, I, I I fell asleep in Mexico and woke up in the United States <laughs> after the, you know, the river change. But we got to talk about um, Kennedy, and uh, I was hoping I was going to go through through the whole thing, but um, I talk a lot. <laughs> you know, and, and this is one of the one of the messages that, that I wanted to say, and I was really grateful that they let me put it in here. Uh, you see all these things, little boats. And you can see that they're kind of pesos, right? And one of the groups uh, that worked in the community a lot was the Mujer Obrera. This piece is now on what used to be uh, Levi's, a Levi's plant. And it was donated to, to the city. I don't know exactly how that happened, but um, that's where the center's at. But, you know, we also talk, we have to talk about the bad things, uh, you know, like NAFTA. You know, NAFTA really displaced a lot of workers, and uh, that's what this represents. Uh, a lot of little dolaritos and a lot of little pesos going down the river, you know, or coming up, you know, because of the employment that got lost. So that's why you have the costureras in the back. And as the costureras are, are, are tan cosiendo, you know, we have actually who's supposed to be George Bush picking it up and making little boats that would turn into money, right? Uh, and you have La Mujer Obrera, and you have the treaties that eventually um, led to the treaty of uh, the Chamisal. And the other side, we have some of the housing that was there that was demolished, you know, when uh, the Chamisal Park, you know, was built there. <clears throat> we also included the actual map of the land that was lost and gained and kind of repartida, you know, as we say in Spanish. And you see the, on top is the part of, of the needle that used to be the costura, so it's kind of like it's, it's cosiendo the mapa on, on the mural. And this is how it turned out. So this is how the, the mural looks now. It's on top of the building, and it's a huge mural. And if you guys have time, go check it out. It's about 100 feet long, and at the top point, it's about 20 feet tall. And it's all uh, fabricated into glass, and uh, the lights are in the back, so at night it just glows. So again, I wanted to show you this so that you can kind of see back where I started seeing muralism, the origins of my uh, first sighting of a mural and how it had influenced me and where I come from. And that's about all I got because I'm about to run out of time. <laughs> thank you, and uh, thank you guys for inviting me and for listening.